So, Graham, just just do an overall evaluation offensively through two games. I mean, you guys putting up nice numbers. Are you happy? Still things you can do better? Or what, are, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think there's always there's always room for improvement. But um, we've some flash of doing some really good things. Like we expected, you know, I think the O-line's played at a high level. Um, like I said, since I've been here, that we have a really, really – we have a group of guys that have played a lot of football games, and at that position that matters, especially played a lot of football games together. Um, and so, you know, the other night, I thought the protection was really, really good. I think they got pressure on JT just once or twice, probably the, all, the whole night, you know. And, and uh, when, when that's the case, um, it, it makes things a lot easier as a quarterback. I know that, you know, and I thought the JT showed some really good toughness week one, took some shots, stayed in there like I talked about. Um, but, but the other night, they kept him really clean and uh, – like I said, it just makes your job a whole lot easier. Uh, I think, you know, the receivers played at a at a higher level the other night as well. You know, and that was that was good to see. Um, done some good things. You know, I think there's there's uh, like I said, there's always room for improvement. And just like after week one, there's room for improvement. And after this week, there's room for improvement. And um, you know, I think that you know we got down there around the ten twice and and settled for field goals, and that's probably the difference in winning and losing football games. You know, and. Um, so, so that's kind of been the message. Like, there's a lot of good stuff on tape. You've done, you've done a whole lot of good things, um, but there's still opportunities to win football games that that we didn't take advantage of, and that's what uh, we got to make the most of opportunities we have. You mentioned that um, I, I, I count the first half. I really count you four for four because that last yeah, session last really was meaningless. But in the second half, you had a couple of procedure penalties. What's your message there? How do you uh, clean that stuff up? Because those were two critical plays. No question. They were both, uh, you know, we have first and goal from the five, get a procedure, make it um, first and goal from the 10, which that's a huge difference there. And, and on that play, we had a good play. You know, I thought we'd probably been down to the one or two if we didn't score on the play. We had the first procedure. And then we get to fourth and half a yard and um, going for it and, you know, expect to score there and get another procedure penalty and, and settle for a field goal. Um, I thought they did a great job after that, getting a big stop for us and giving us another chance to go to there and tie the game. And the guys did a great job doing that. But at the same time, if you score a touchdown right there, um, you're not going down to tie, you're going down to win it. And uh, obviously that's a huge difference. And so, yeah, um, you know, week one we had, I think, five or six procedure penalties and something we addressed, got it down to two. But the two we had last night were in crit or this week were in critical situations that really cost you points, you know. And so um, – you know, like I've like I've said since I've been here, offensively we talk about being selfless, tough, and disciplined. I think we do. I think we've done be the selfless part and the tough part really, really well uh, the first two weeks. And uh, the discipline has to continue to improve, and I think it improves some. You know, um, just just carrying over practice things to the game, like you know, you know, simple things like catching the football, something we work on every day, pat and go. Like we do catching drills every every single day, and, and that's kind of been my message to those guys. Like we catch more balls in practice and throughout the week than probably anyone in the country, and so. Um, that's going to show up on Saturday because we do that, and it did this week. You know what I mean? I think uh, from a ball security standpoint, uh, we went from having three or four balls on the ground week one to not having any balls on the ground the other night. Um, so you clean some things up. Like I said, from a distance standpoint, we had less procedures, but but we still had two critical ones. And so that's where you got to continue to continue to get better and and uh, you know hold guys to a high standard. You know these are the standards and expectations, and when you meet them. Good things happen, and when they, and when you don't, bad things happen. But also, there's got to be, like I said, we got to hold hold those guys to the to the standards that that we've set for them. And uh, so, like I said, I think the way we define, you know, selfless, we've done a heck of a job. Strained and done a lot of good things. Tough, like the way we define is overcoming adversity with great attitude, with great effort. I think they've done a great job of that because in in two weeks, um, as a unit, I think we faced a, a lot of adversity throughout two weeks, and and uh, they always answer the bill. So that's great to see. The discipline part is is where we have to continue to improve, and um, if you do, I think you you win football games. What did it take this week for Bryce to come back and have the kind of game he had after what happened in, in the previous game? And uh, I'm sure if as many passes as you threw in your life, uh, there were there were the time maybe when you had a situation somewhat similar to that. And, and did you offer any advice? You know, more than anything, I think what we did was, if you look at week one, it's unfortunate that everyone's going to remember the, the ball that kind of bounced off his head and they got to pick six to win on because, um, you know, he had a pretty good night that night too, made some good catches. Uh, and I think I talked about it last week, you know, week one, he called a couple third down conversions where he got banged and, you know, they actually called targeting on both of them and picked them both up. But 
got hit hard enough that it looked like they had targeted him, you know. Um, and, and this, uh, you know, made two contested touchdown catches, made two tough third down catches where he got hit and bounced up and, and kept playing. And uh, and like I said, just had an unfortunate play right there at the end. And uh, it's kind of the one that people remember. But I think, you know, as a player, that's hard to get over too. So I think there's a ton of credit to him from a standpoint of, of moving on. I think last week, since I've been here, Bryce has worked really hard. You know what I mean? And I think that that's uh, – and I think you're seeing that on the field. And uh, last week he may have worked, at, you know, he was in here as much as anyone, spent a ton of time in here, caught a ton of extra balls, and it showed up on Saturday. But uh, and, and so I think a lot of the credit belongs to Bryce just for the way he handled it, the way he showed up, the way he continued to work. Uh, but, but you know, I think all week what we tried to do as a coaching staff was was point out how well Bryce played. And, yeah, it's going to be remembered, you know, the one that, that uh, they got the pick on from Pitt was the one that people were going to remember from that game. Um, but showed him all the good stuff they did and said, this is who he is. You know what I mean? It not, you know, the, the ball bouncing off his face was just an unlucky bounce. Who he really is is the guy that made all the tough catches, who made contested catches, who caught two touchdowns. And we tried to really drive that home, is that's who you are, and that's what you've worked to be, and that's what you're going to be moving forward. Uh, he put in the work and, uh, and, had a, and had a good night the other night. And I, like I said, I think a lot of it's just uh, that, that's who uh, we expect him to be, and that's the way he's worked. And, and – um, you're seeing the results on Saturday because you don't just show up on Saturday and get results. Like <laughs> whatever you work, whatever you do all week, or not not only all week, but what you've done, you know, all year up to this point shows up on Saturdays. And he's done a good job. He's really worked hard at at being consistent and, and playing with confidence and playing big, um, and that's showing up on Saturdays. What have you seen out of the development out of your young quarterbacks behind JT? You know they continue to improve, and, and Coach uh, Coach Brown does a great job of of giving opportunities for those guys to get better throughout the week, and so um, especially like with Nico, like he gets a ton of reps um, throughout the week. Uh, like Sunday, we have a we have a pretty good scrimmage. Usually on Tuesdays, we'll throw a scale with some developmental guys or throw seven on seven. Wednesdays, they get some more team reps, and then uh, Thursday we do uh, we do seven on seven again. So. You know he he's getting a ton of reps with within what we do, and uh, he gets better and better and better every day, and and so that's that's good. And I think that um, you know I've probably said this a ton of times since I've been here, but you can't replace like experience. You know what I'm saying? And the only way for for young guys to get experience if they're not playing in the games is is to get those developmental reps and get reps throughout practice. And and so um, he's gotten a ton of reps over the last two weeks, and uh, you can see him growing. It seems like by the day, and so. Uh, and the more confident he gets, and I think this is anyone, the more confident you get, the, the, the better you play. And, and so I think a lot of things, confidence just comes with seeing things and uh, having reps in them. So he's getting a lot of reps in it, and, and it's almost like he gets more and more talented each day, but it's not like his talent level is going up. I think just his, how comfortable he is and, and his experience and his confidence is going up. And because of that, uh, you throw it with a little more crisp. You throw it with a little more pop, you know what I'm saying, because – you just know – you have confidence. You know what you're doing. There's no hesitation. You rip the ball. The ball jumps out of your hand. Uh, so that's been awesome to see. And uh, and the other guys are growing too. You know what I mean? We're getting those guys reps as well. But uh, Nico has, has taken the – probably gotten the most, like, from a developmental standpoint. And, it, and like I said, it's, it's fun to watch a guy get better and better every day. And, it, you know, like I said, it's kind of neat to see when, when you can truly see, like, man, each day there's improvements. And, um, and I think that he can see that. I think he can feel that. Obviously, I see it. And, and um, that's been a lot of fun. And so, so uh, he continues to grow. Week one, you ran the ball really well. Uh, I'm guessing because you ran it so well, that enabled you to pass the ball well week, week two. I'm sure they probably tried to take away some things in the run game. Where does your offense have to be, in your opinion, after eight quarters? Are you where you want to be? Are you still getting to where you want to be? Well, we're always going to look to get better, but like you said, I think that um, we've we've shown the ability to, to throw in and run the ball well and, and put yourself – Give yourself a chance to win doing either one of them, and so that that's been uh, that's really positive. And and um, you know I've said since since I've ever called plays like you got to be able to run the football to win games at a high level, and and I like to throw it as much as anyone, um, you know. But but at the end of the day, like if you can't run the football, you at some point you're not going to be able to win. And so I think running the ball is important. Um, you know, week one I thought we really ran it effectively. The other night we had pretty good yards, but I think we left some stuff on the field in the run game. Uh, but also they, they, you know, they, they uh, played a lot more one high, I think, probably to, to try to get people in around the box to stop the run. And when you do that, you're putting guys, you know, on the perimeter in more one-on-one situations. And, um, 
And I think we have the guys that, that if you put them in one-on-one situations, can make the play. And so, um, you know, if you, can, if you can be really balanced, if you can, if you can hurt people running or throwing the ball, um, it, you can be really tough to stop. And so, so that's been good to see that, that we've thrown the ball well, we've ran the ball well when we needed to. Um, and I think kind of like what I touched on when we started, like I think it goes back to having a really experienced O-line that's played a lot of games together. And so in the run game, they, they, they have a good feel for what they're doing and, and where the other guy's going to be because they've got a ton of reps in that run scheme or whatever it is, inside zone, outside, you know, whatever, whatever we call, they've run that play together a whole lot of times. And when that's the case, like you create running lanes for those backs and let those backs just go be themselves. You know, also in the pass game, if, if the quarterback can stand back there pretty clean, um, it makes the game a whole lot easier for that guy. And JT, JT's an intelligent kid that sees things well and uh, has, has, has thrown the ball pretty well throughout the first two weeks. Um, and when that old line's getting a clean pocket, like that makes it a whole lot easier. And so I think, like I said, um, the, the experience of that offensive line and the ability that they've given us to, to have a chance to run the ball well and throw the ball well has really helped us. And, and like I said, I think that, that uh, that's a group that you can really build around and, and kind of what we've tried to do is, hey, they, they, they have more experience than anyone. They, they're, that's a talented group. And let's let them uh, kind of carry the load. We put a lot on them, but um, they've answered the bell for two weeks. Johnson, CJ, and Tony Mathis all get carries. What do you see from them? And does it change kind of drive to drive with who's getting more touches and more snaps? Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, you want to feed the hot hand is kind of how I've always felt on offense, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's running the ball, throwing the ball. Like, if you got a hot hand, feed it, you know. And uh, But at the same time, you got to keep them fresh. And so that's kind of the balancing act of that. Um, in the run game, uh, I thought that all three of those guys can get you yards. I thought that uh, – you know, uh, JJ came in kind of in the third quarter, and I thought he kind of gave us a spark, and then, you know, he did some good things in the run game and popped a few, and so he played a little more um, as we went there just because, like I said, at the time he was kind of the hot hand. and, and uh, But but you also got to keep him fresh, you know, and I think when you have three, you have a better chance to do that. And, uh, you know, CJ does some special things with the, with the ball in his hands, and then if he gets tired, you know, the other night I think we gave him a couple carries in a row, and he was he was looking at that sideline for for a breather. And so, um, then you bring someone else in. Uh, but you know, it it, it does uh, it helps when you have depth, and it doesn't matter what position you're at. If you got a little depth, it, it makes everything a little easier because you can keep them fresh and and keep them running. And, and if someone gets the hot hand, you can really feed them. Hey, Graham, does excuse me, um, what you access from your play call sheet and all that stuff does it change at all? Depend at all on on who's available at running back? Because if you have one guy who's doing something good, you can do his stuff. But if all of a sudden you make a change, are you, are you that familiar, I guess, with, or I guess in the moment, who can do what, what you want to do with those three guys? You know, I think that, that we've um, obviously tried to develop those guys that any other three can do any of it. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I think I touched on this last week, but the thing with CJ was he just hasn't played running back very long. So the thing that we were most hesitant about was like in the past game, does he really know protections? Well, can he pick up the blitz, stuff like that? Uh, and through two weeks, I don't know if he's missed a protection. And, and when someone comes, um, that's 240 pounds behind him, and, and that's a little harder to run through than little guys. And so he's done a great job in pass protection. So, um, the, 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 you know, probably the, the, the best thing about it so far is, is all three of them. It's not like you've had to call plays differently based on who's in the game. And, um, and sometimes that's not the case. But but uh, with the three, with what they've done so far, we've just been able to call the game and, and expect all three of them to do good things. And, and obviously, I think that different guys run different plays better. Um, but but I think all three of those have a good feel. They know what they're supposed to do. They know how to protect, um, which is obviously extremely important in the, for the pass game. And, and at the running back position, you got to be able to do that. And they've all three shown the ability to do that. Um, and, and they all know what they're doing in the run game. They know what they're supposed to read, and that doesn't mean you're perfect because you're going to miss reads just like you miss reads at quarterback or any other position. But um, they know what they're supposed to do and um, are giving us a chance to, to get yards in the run game, and, th and that helps the calls. When you evaluated the JT's last throw there in the overtime, was it the read? Was it the kid making a play? What, what did you see there that, that, that caused that to, to be a, the pick six to end the game? Yeah, I think there were a lot of things that played into it. The kid obviously made a good play, but um, we talk about it all the time. And JT, if you ask him, would probably tell you the same thing. Like on out routes, you can't leave it inside. He left it inside. You know, um, I think he could have been a little quick with his feet. I think that Bryce, uh, you know, if Bryce could have dug off the ball just a little bit better, and it would have held that guy because because the 
you know, coming off the field, I just assumed that guy must have read JT's drop and drove it. And uh, but if you go back and watch, he wasn't reading. You know, his eyes were on the receiver, and and so. Um, I think just because of soft coverage, I'm sure JT and Bryce both thought, well, this is just a, a layup. And uh, Bryce could have drove off the ball a little better. JT could have kept his, you know, sped his feet up a little more. Um, but at the end of the day, if you keep the ball outside, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like, worst case scenario is it's incomplete and you're playing fourth and five right there. And so um, I think that's the biggest correction is you can't, and, and that's, that's not something new. That's something we talk about every single day. Every time you throw an out route, like, you cannot leave that football inside. He left a little inside, and, the, and you know, give the kid credit. The kid made a heck of a play. Uh, but, but, you know, you can't just sit here and say, well, what did he do well? Like, like we got to figure out um, what, did, what did we do wrong or where can we prevent that? You know, is it a misread? Is it this, that? I don't think it's a misread. I think that if we dig off, if, if Bryce runs off the ball and threatens that kid's vertical a little more and, and JT speeds his feet up, it's an easy completion. We're playing first and 10 from the 12 probably. Um, and we expect to go score. Uh, but we didn't do those things. And, and, then the, and then the kid on top of that made a really good play. You know, even because a lot of times, even if you do it the way we did it, you can get away with it. And that's the scary thing, or not the scary thing, but I kind of think the dichotomy of coaching is like, if you get away with that, I think you got to coach it the same way as if you don't get away with it. And that's what I, we've always tried to do is like, you know, if we if the kid doesn't make that play and we throw a completion there, you can't tell the, we can't tell our guys good play. You know, I mean, you got to you still got to coach them the same way as, you know, you left that ball inside. We got to dig off the ball more. And yeah, we got away with it this time. Um, but in but in, uh, you know, in, in a different situation, you won't get away with it. And, and uh, in that situation, we didn't. But but like I said, I think that in coaching, you got to see those things and, and, and coach them before they happen too. And that's something we touch on all the time. It's like throwing that ball. You got to be on time. It's got to be on time and outside. That's what we teach all the time as a quarterback. And and on any any route, we talk to the running back. I mean, the receivers all the time about you got to dig off the ball. There has to be a vertical threat on everything we do because if there's not, they can sit on it, you know. And, and those were two corrections on our end, or three corrections: speed our feet up at the quarterback position, threaten them vertical at the receiver position, keep the ball outside. You do, you do those three things, um, I think you, that's a different play. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir.